That's not better. That's the best my poor little Gloriosum can do. Um, but hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Oh gosh, um, I have been sort of, I'm not gonna lie, I have been sort of putting this video off because you guys know I did part one of my houseplant tour already. That was just the Hoyas, that one was really quick, really easy. I feel like the majority of the people that are on this channel are not looking for Hoya content. I personally find it to be my least favorite content to film and to get on this channel, so we made that one really fast. Did a quick montage, highlighted a few, and then we called it a day. If you haven't watched it yet, um, I will link it in the description. But for these next two parts for the houseplant tour, they're going to be long-winded. We're going to go through every single freaking plant in this plant room today. Um, I'm going to show you where they are. I'm going to show you the setup. I'm going to show you the greenhouses, the exo sizes, the shelf, everything. And hopefully I don't miss anything. And yeah, the last time that I did a houseplant tour, like a proper real houseplant tour, was two years ago now when I first launched this, this YouTube channel. Um, honestly, I thought that that was going to be like the only video that I uploaded on YouTube ever. By the way, my channel turned two last month which is just so cute. Um, but yeah, that was my first video ever, so now here we are almost two years ago exactly um, with another one. So I hope you guys enjoy it, but before we get into the plants, today's video is sponsored by Factor. If you guys haven't heard of Factor, they are fresh, ready-made meals delivered to your door. Emphasis on the ready-made, which is my love language personally. These chef created meals are fresh, never frozen, designed by dietitians to ensure that every meal is packed with science-based nutritional quality. They have keto meals, they have vegan meals, vegetarian meals, and low calorie meals, specifically meals like roasted red chili mahi-mahi, caramelized onion and goat cheese risotto, Thai roasted vegetable green curry, and fajita spiced shrimp and filet mignon. So my sister is a stay-at-home mom of two little kids, two little babies, and I decided to gift her a box to keep as emergency meals because I'm such a great sister. And honestly, like I don't even remember the last time that she took the time to just make herself like a real meal. She's just constantly eating the scraps left by the kids or Cheerios on the floor and that's just become her life now. So I sent her a box and if you are an avid watcher of this channel, you know that I am obsessed with my niece Millie. Um, her opinion matters a lot to me. So I had her try a meal and in her words, verbatim, mm, yummy. Also, do you want to hear something spooky? A spooky secret? I spent close to $200 on food delivery in the month of March. Honestly, one of them wasn't even food. It was just mostly beverages and a little snack. But yeah, $200 in one month on just on five meals, four meals. It's it's so it's it's, it's terrible. Don't don't be like me. So, if you are ready to Stop getting takeout, um, stop food prepping, because I hate food prepping, and don't want to do dishes anymore, um, try Factor. And if you want to give it a try, you can use the link in my description or use this code below to get 50% off your first box. Thank you Factor for sponsoring today's video. Grab a drink or a snack or a dog to cuddle because today is going to be a long one. Someone wants to say hi. Oh man, it's been a minute, dude. It's been a while since you've been on this channel. Say hi to all of our friends and hug haters. <laughs> this is a Pudge. If you guys are new here, I used to show him a lot on this channel, but um, I don't really anymore because of mean people on the internet and I can take a lot of bullying on this channel to a certain extent about me and the way that I grow plants and stuff, but the second it comes to my little guy, that's where you just hit, you just strike a nerve and I just can't, I just can't take it. So um, he has not been present on this channel, but he is alive and well, doing great. He just turned six years old. My little guy is just getting so, so big. 
Um, but yeah, he just wanted to say hello and actually he has been pitter-pattering outside my plant room door because he wants to go for a walk. You want to go for a walk, don't you? You want to go potty? Time to go potty, empty the bladder. Yeah. You want to go potty? Oh! And I have dog hair on me. So, you guys will go on a commercial break and I'm gonna go pee my dog. We are going to ease into this nice and easy. So I'm gonna stand as far back as possible. Um, I'm just kind of at the doorway. And in this little corner first, um, this is where I've put Thursday's tank. If you guys didn't know, I had a betta fish for a little bit. Unfortunately, he has passed now and I've just got this empty tank, which I'm still figuring out what to do with. I don't know if I'm gonna sort of build this out into like a terrarium or some kind of propagation area or if I'm gonna get another fish, um, my heart just is not quite ready to replace Thursday yet. So um, it's still running just in case I do wanna get another fish. I wanna keep it nice and I don't know. I just want it to be ready for a fish if I do decide to go that way. Anyway, um, I have this little shelf here that I just got from Amazon. This shelf has moved everywhere in this plant room. Now it's just living in this corner and it houses some of the um, old fish stuff that I have and some vessels, which needs to be organized. But um, yeah, usually this area is packed with glass vessels. I've just pretty much used them all for the most part because I've been repotting like crazy. This little area down here used to house one of my exos, which I've moved. And now it just kind of has plants that are on my radar to repot to rehab basically i just want it to be like an area where i keep all the plants that are next on the i guess to-do list i'm saving a lot of these plants for the next week of so yeah this is just i don't know this is not going to be forever but it's kind of just what it is right now and i just have a 10 watt barina bar under here that's keeping these guys fed <laughs> essentially um this rack here is from Amazon, as is this one. Everything will be linked in the description. But um, I had a friend custom, not custom build, but I bought this little piece of wood. I do believe I, I don't know, showed, showed it on camera in one video showing how I kind of put this together. But it's just a piece of wood that I picked up at Home Depot, had it cut to size by a friend, painted it black. And that hoses this larger exo and this is my favorite exo size honestly if i could just have like a bunch of this size i would be happy i honestly feel like i would replace this large one with just more of these if i could but that no we're not we're just not going to do that i've got one um barina bar up here as well as one monio so the one in the back is a 10 watt the one in the front is a 24 watt and I just have a piece of glass over it because the mesh that it comes with, which I'll show you in a little bit, sort of diffuses a lot of light. So I just wanted to remove it. I said that I was going to have a custom top, like a custom acrylic top made for it, which never happened. So now it's just covered with glass and some of my um, ledger plastic that I use for the lazy poles up there. And of course I said I was gonna go through every single plant, which I am, but I kind of just wanna show you who is in here and I guess the orientation of all of them, like where they're placed in here. So very, very quickly, we've got my Soderini in the corner. Sorry for the light. I don't really know how to like capture these exos without it getting all washed out. And I'm trying to hold the camera still. I'm so bad at doing this, but um, this is the uh, Philodendron Soderini in the corner. I have my Alocasia heterophylla, my Philodendron patriciae, heterocraspid on here. Then down below, I have my Monstera obliqua, Skindapsis, Silver Cloud, one of my Philodendron summer glories, uh, Philodendron serpents. Back there is my Elaphoglossum metallicum. This one is the Philodendron quillelii round. And I think that's it. Oh, and then I've got like another Soderini back there, which I will show you in a bit, but that is pretty much everybody in this one EXO. I do get questions about whether or not I have windows in this room, and this is pretty much it. Like you guys can see, here's the entrance. Um, this is where the laundry 
um, what is it? Washer and dryer are. And um, yeah, these are pretty much the windows. On the other side of this wall is my kitchen. So not a ton of light comes in through here. So I just keep them closed because it really does nothing. Um, oh, and I forgot to show you my little money tree, not money tree, my chiflera in the corner, which is currently looking crazy, but um, yeah. So anyway, um, moving on to the next shelf. This is what used to be my Anthurium shelf, which is now housing mostly philodendron and um, alocasia and different kinds of plants. So the setup is not very complicated. It truly is just this. Um, I have some of the lights off, by the way, because it's super, super like blown out um, when I film on this camera. So uh, I do have these two lights off. It's usually all fully lit. I have just my old um, Ikea cabinet glass on here while I hunt for shelf liners, like proper shelf liners that actually fit. Um, down here is where I keep my very sad herbs and veggies. Don't roast me. This is my first time trying to grow them. And then my propagations in there. This second shelf, I've got my Escaletto in the back. I have this Alocasia, which I always forget the name of. Um, my Philip Philodendron <laughs> Alocasia Green Dragon. My Scalprum is here. This um, Angry Gloriosum that I got from Alice is here. On the shelf above it is my Philodendron Mexicanum, my Hoya Publicalix, another Summer Glory, my bigger one, Begonia Sinbad, Mayoi, and um, that's it for those plants. Up here I have the Ninger Tents that I inherited from Alice, Philodendron Billetiae, my Alocasia, uh, come on, Cupria variegated soderoi that currently is rehabbing and needs to be repotted and then I have a philodendron el guapo philodendron silver on the left and then above is my philodendron billy black or billy atabapoense I don't actually know what plant that is um, I have one of my uh, the Tarifolium props up there, and then a Begonia Lucerna. So in terms of the lighting situation, really all I've done is used Velcro ties to secure it to this shelf, and I put them sort of in the front because then everyone gets light rather than if it was in the middle. Um, I've just found that put, placing it in the front has worked a lot better for me. And then I've sort of snaked the cords all down the sides of this and just used black Velcro to kind of hide wires and keep it looking somewhat tidy. And then in that corner is basically the, what do you call that in like a spaceship? Central, central, central something. Um, this basically lights the entire room. So everything is connected to one Wi-Fi um, tower and everything goes on and off at the same time. What else in this little corner? I think, I think that's it. So now we're moving to the left. I've got this light off because it gets a little abrasive, but I have this EXO up here, which is the largest size that ExoTerra makes. I think it's the largest size. If you don't remember, I had a broken door on the right. So I just, instead of like trying to buy a new door and have it like I don't know, it, it just seemed like too much work. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna remove the doors. And I actually really enjoyed <laughs> that decision. I stick by it and I really like the look of an open EXO. And the reason I like it is because I can still freely spray in there and like get the moss poles nice and wet, water and like allow water to like trickle into the EXO. And yeah, it still performs the same. It just obviously is not gonna hold in the humidity like this one would. But in here, we have a Philodendron Gloriosum, what I believe is a White Veins. Um, this one is from Erin. Well, it was from Erin, given to Alice, and Alice gave it to me. And I'm very happy I adopted it because it's been actually, it's been growing pretty well in my care, which is kind of surprising. Behind it, I have my recently repotted Tortum. I have a Philodendron Genevievianum in the corner. I've got my little orchid, which I forgot the name of. In the corner there is my Philodendron Florida Beauty, which <laughs> I'll tell you a little bit about why it looks like that. Philodendron Esmeralda Ensenero in the back, looking really, really sad and pathetic. 
Raphidophora pertusa, philodendron esmeral dense af, and um, I have a philodendron glad hands in the corner. And I think that is about it. Oh, and then my philodendron tenu, can't forget. Miss Tenu, sort of hiding in the back there. So let's talk about the lighting situation. I've got two 10 watt barinas and one 24 watt, <laughs> one 24 watt um, Monios. And I, on the side, have my mother light and another Monios that is lighting this area. And the reason that this mother light is off is because it is very, very, very bright. And if I had it on while filming, you guys, I would look like I'm filming on the sun. These two lights are specifically for this shelf and not for this EXO, just to clarify. So this large EXO is literally just sitting right on top of this Millsbo wide. And no, it does not fit perfectly. You, can, you guys might be able to see back there that there's like, I don't know, I wanna say there's about four or five inches hanging off the back, leaning against the wall. And then just a tiny little bit hanging off in the front, but it does not affect the doors at all. I can still swing it open and closed as normal which brings us to the Millsbo Wide, which I should turn the light on. All right, in here is where I keep a lot of the variegated plants because I have two of my 24 watt Monios in here and these are the strongest grow lights that I have in terms of bars besides my mother light. Um, in the corner, I have some of my Friday corms. I have mother Friday here soaking in all of the rays I have a philodendron pink princess, which needs to be repotted like yesterday. Down here, I have a very sad white princess, a mandrula that I am attempting to size up, which I don't think is going to work, but we're going to try. And my Syngonium chia pence, Uliarum donburnsii in the back here. Um, this one, I cannot remember the name of, but when I feature it, I will throw up the name, obviously. And then this is my Epipremnum Panatum Albo Variegata, which I recently chopped and repotted, and hopefully she, um, continues her growth for me, because I have worked very hard to get it to this ridiculous size. Up here, we have two elbows, and, um, on top of it is a Ficus, uh, Shiveriana, and then my philodendron ring of fire. And in the corner, <laughs> don't roast me. This is my begonia luberziae from Amanda. Um, and then up here is my spooky, spooky begonia melatosticta. Um, in terms of the setup, I took out the shelves, obviously, because then everything wouldn't fit if I had a shelf in there. I have one of these little Amazon shelves that is being held up by just tape and I'm expecting it to crash down at any moment. I'm surprised it hasn't crashed down by now, but I try and keep everything on there really light and not overload it with weight. Um, everything else is kind of just like, you can see I use glass vessels to prop things up and give it a little bit of like height difference between the plants so that everything can fit. My pink princess is being held up by a, um, a hook, as is this one. Moving on to the left here, we have my Redsta Tall. I think it's just called a Redsta. And this houses all of my Hoyas. Um, we already did the Hoya tour, so I'm not gonna go in depth again. But just to kind of give you guys a peek at what it looks like. Um, pretty simple. Obviously took out the shelves as well. I've got some shelves, some, I mean, the smaller Amazon shelves. I've got some of my grids up here. And things are kind of just like bursting at the seams. I'm not quite sure what the plan is once everything, I don't know, once it like really, really gets like full, I'm not quite sure where everything is gonna go. But for now, we're just, we're making it work. And then on top of the Redsta, I've got my smaller XO which uh, used to be down here and will probably move back down once I, I... I would like to hopefully find an EXO that fits the top of this red stuff better. The only thing is it's a little bit difficult for me to get in here and do maintenance because it's so high, um, but I like the look of it, so I'm probably gonna do it. Um, and yeah, it just houses some Anthurium. I'm not gonna go too 
in depth. Let me just give you kind of a peek because I need to plug my camera back in. It's Zion. But yeah, obviously I'm growing the majority of my Ethereum outside of a greenhouse. These ones are newer acquisitions. Some are rehab, some are recent repots that I just, I just want to give them a little bit more attention and I will go in depth about who's in here a little bit later. In this sad corner, I have my Refitifora Pertusa, the top cutting. Actually, no, I chopped the top of it. This was the mid cut, which I'm trying to reroute in water and I'm not seeing any roots just yet, but yeah, this one doesn't really have a home. So I kind of just shoved it in the corner and she doesn't look very happy. In here, I keep, we keep like cleaning stuff, storage things. I'll give you guys a peek at this. I didn't clean it, but um, this is a combination of plant stuff slash tools, cleaning things, but mostly plant stuff. Um, it's pretty organized. It just looks kind of messy right now. Like all of this needs to be cleaned, but like prop vessels and jars and vases, all of my, you know, my pots and stuff. Down here are more cleaning things, more plant stuff, but it's an organized mess. Oh, it's an organized mess, but um, it houses everything I need it to house, so it works for me. In this corner is my Mars Hydro tent, and um, I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. Feast your eyes on this atrocity. My tent used to be sort of a shrine for all of my most beloved plants that I just was, you know, trying to grow nice and large, like my Tortum and my Florida Beauty and my Frydeck. But the more that I've had this tent, while the growth is insane and amazing and wonderful and magical in the tent, I like to see my plants kind of at all times. And so it just made more sense for me to take advantage of the um, conditions in here for rehabs. You guys can really see how sad everything looks. Um, I will kind of show you all of the rehabs I have right now um, later on, but I just wanted to show you the setup. It looks really weird. I've literally just like used some old grids and hung it by S hooks, used a bunch of zip ties and bamboo sticks to like MacGyver some kind of floating shelf here because these are loaded with spider mites and I wanted to keep them as separated from these as possible even though some of these still have spider mites. But we'll talk, we'll talk about that later. It just, it looks like a hot mess. I don't like being in here, so I'm gonna close her. <laughs> and uh, before I forget, I do have a bunch of barinas in here actually. I think I have like six or five on each side so that light is bouncing off from every corner and square inch of this tent. Um, I do have some fans running in here, which I turned off so that you guys can't hear it in the audio, but yeah, that's the setup in here. I have my closet, which is half for plant stuff and half for storage and other things. Another organized mess. This is how I've organized pretty much all of my substrates and other things that don't fit on my plant cart, which I'll show you. Everything is in bins. Um, everything is labeled for the most part. And then down here is where I keep my current box of laziness, which are vessels that I need to clean. Down here is where I keep excess soil and my potting table is right here. Trash can, stool, everything. It's just kind of all mashed together. Um, it looks chaotic, but it's actually pretty organized. And then of course my plant cart, which I think I'll show you maybe at the end of this video and just kind of show you some of the changes I've made and show you everything that's currently sitting on it. If not, you can watch this video, which I'll throw up on the screen and you can watch me build it out and put things on there and just get an idea of how I've set mine up. So I've turned all the lights off behind me again because it just looks so it looks too much when all the lights are on in this plant room when I'm filming in here. So whenever I film in the plant room now, it's going to be a very dark and moody look, which I hope you guys are okay with. But I'm going to just start by taking plants out one by one. I'm sorry if you guys were expecting more of a montage situation like the Hoya stuff, but um, I already knew going into this that I think the majority of people would rather me pull one out one by one. So. We're just gonna start in this XO next to me. Um, so this is my Philodendron Summer Glory. 
you have not heard of a Summer Glory before, it's a cross between a Philodendron Gloriosum and a Philodendron Macaulay's Finale Hybrid. And I honestly just think it got the traits from each parent, like the best ones, and they just mushed it all together and it's just a beautiful plant. Um, I will say that the hardened off leaves, they're not as like, I guess, delicious. <laughs> as when they are just first emerging. Sorry, I'm trying to like show you guys without the light kind of washing it out. But yeah, it's like this really dark, dark green color and then it fades off to this lighter green color. But it's still so beautiful. It has the venation of a Gloriosum, which is so fun. It's got the texture of a Gloriosum, but then it has the leaf shape and growth pattern of a Macaulay's Finale and it's got this really beautiful abaxial like the Macaulay's Finale. So it's just a fun hybrid and honestly, it's been so easy. I was a little bit scared because I'm not the best at growing Gloriosum. I don't know if it's the nature of, you know, that they're crawling plants and I'm just not historically very good with crawlers, but this hybrid has been so, so vigorous and I've just been surprised at how easy it is to grow. So um, if you guys remember, I acquired another Macaulay's Finale, which I will show you. Wait, where is it? Where did my... Hello? Um, I got this locally from my friend Krista and it started as a really baby plant. The leaf was a little smaller than this if I can remember and like look how much it's grown in just a short period of time. I can't quite remember when I got this. Um, I'll see if I can throw it up on the screen. But yeah, it's grown really really fast and it's just in no drainage in soil and um, she's, yeah, she's growing, she's growing really well. So I highly recommend this hybrid if you're looking for a fun philodendron to add. The next one here is my Skindapsis Silver Cloud. To my recollection, I think this is my last remaining Skindapsis and it is dripping everywhere. The reason I don't own many Skindapsis is mostly because I find them to be a little bit more high maintenance um, in terms of like their watering and what the roots require to be happy. They're not, in my experience, okay, they're not very forgiving when you forget to water or if, let's say, a grow light goes off and it doesn't have light for a while. They just, to me, have very low tolerance for bullshit. So um, yeah, I just have one left and I've kept the one that I've loved the most. Um, I will say that the I used to have a Skindapsis, I think it's called a Silver Hero, and it was just all silver and it was beautiful, but that thing really hated me. I found the Silver Cloud to be much easier and I'm constantly trimming this down and propagating it because I just prefer it as a small plant. Like honestly, if it just stayed this size forever, I would be so I'd be so happy. Yeah, I used to have I used to have a really large plant of this. I've chopped it up, given some to my mom, given some to friends, like sold a bunch, and um, this is kind of what's left of it. So, yeah, this one's growing in no drainage in pond from the variegated plant shop. I call this party pond because it looks like a party in there. Looks like a fiesta. And yeah, I recently repotted this one actually, but it's taken really, really really well to the transition. Um, if I have any recommendation for the Skindapsis Silver Cloud, it's to grow it in no drainage and grow it in pond, period. Moving right along, we have, oh, it's getting wet again. I just, I watered last night so that everything was hydrated for this video. Um, so this is my Monstera Obliqua. I think this is a Obliqua Peru. I have no clue. My friend one day showed up at my house and dropped a cutting off and the rest is history. So um, I think that she gave it to me as a two leaf cutting and it might have been these two leaves actually. I can grab them. And I didn't really have a lot of faith in myself in trying to grow this because I don't know, I find Monstera's to be a bit challenging as well. Um, not as easy as Philodendron in my experience. But this one, again, has been really, really low-key, low very low maintenance. I will say though that uh, what I've read is that if you don't get it on a pole and it's not consistently feeling like it's being supported by a pole, it will run. It will run a marathon. And um, I've seen it in person. <laughs> 
not to call Laura now, but she has an obliqua and it ran out of pole and there was just this long, long runner. She had it wrapped around the shop. It was, yeah, it was funny. But um, yeah, I've always really spoiled this thing from the beginning. I have it on a climb pole by Propagation Diaries. I specifically like this pole because the holes are not as large as a lot of the poles that are on the market right now. So when you have something like tree fern fiber that has perlite and other amendments inside of it, it doesn't fall out as much as the other ones. And I can actually like take this plant out and take photos of it where I'm like tilting it over and you know trying to get the right angle and yeah, it, it, everything kind of stays put once it's nice and wet. So anyway, just wanted to plug that really quick, but this is my obliqua. Um, I've really enjoyed growing it so far. I can't wait till it gets even more like, I don't know, crusty and fenestrated. Like the one that I saw in person um, first was Lauren's and hers was so fenestrated that there was like hardly any leaf on it. And it was like the creepiest, coolest thing ever. So that is my goal in growing this plant. I just want it to look like a spooky Halloween plant. Uh, I don't know, if you are looking for a uh, obliqua, I feel like Equigenera and even um, Tropicals plants are selling them pretty cheap now. So um, yeah, by the way, I did not pay oh, like original obliqua prices for that. Thank you, Nessa, for that. It was a very nice surprise. Next up is... <laughs> This very sad looking squamic wall. Did I say this was a serpent's earlier? I meant a squamic wall. I don't know what this wants from me. I mean, it seems to be okay and stabilized, but all of my old leaves kind of did this. I'm not sure why. Um, I rarely let this thing dry out. And right now it's in pond in no drainage because I had it with drainage holes before and this thing just went completely crispy and it hated me. So the second that I put it in no drainage, it kind of held on to the leaves like this a bit longer, but I'm not sure if it's like a pH thing or like a conditions thing, but I chopped off this leaf because it basically just looked like this. And I do have it in a greenhouse. People were telling me to grow it outside of a greenhouse because theirs have done so much better outside. Um, but when I had it outside, it just pushed out so much extra floral nectaries, like I could not get a hold of it, hold of it, hold on it. So I moved it back into my EXO and it stopped pushing out as much EFN. It still has a little bit, but not nearly as bad as it was when it was outside of a greenhouse. Um, this is also on a climb pole by Propagation Diaries and yeah. We're just kind of seeing where it goes, but it's just a little baby right now. Nothing, nothing too much to see here. If you guys watched my import video from this year, you'll know that I imported an Alophaglossum metallicum from Equa, no, from Tropicals Plants. And um, I am still very much in love with this plant because of just how like alien-like and beautiful it is. It's got sort of this bluish tint to it. Some of these older leaves don't have that blue anymore. It's kind of faded just to this green. But this one is really still as blue and majestic as it was when it first came in. But the root sitch was pretty atrocious. So I chopped everything off to some people's dismay. But it kind of seems like something is happening. You can see it a little bit better when it's submerged in water. But I don't know if you can kind of see in that little corner, it's just become a little bit more green and bulbous, like something is wanting to pop out of it, which I don't know if that's roots or growth or what, but all I know is that it's turning more green and more um, bulgy every day. Um, the leaves have not died off, they haven't yellowed anymore, so uh, yeah, and it's been, gosh, been several weeks now I would have assumed that if it was like really 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 unhappy it probably would be dead at this point but she is a trooper and I really want to import another one but I'm telling myself no for now until I can get something to happen with that one I'm wearing jeans but honestly I'm giving myself an hour before I change out of them so just letting you know there might be an outfit change 
if you were here on this channel last year, you would have known that I had an entire EXO dedicated to Sodoroi and Majestic. Sodoroi, Sodorini, and Majestic. And it was just my silver garden and I loved it so much. But man, was that hard to keep up. So I thought a bug was crawling on me. It was just my necklace. So I have gone into um, detail about how the Sodorini can be really difficult or it can be a difficult plant to grow if you're not giving it the attention that it needs, if you're not feeding it CalMag like every freaking day of its life. So for me, it was a little bit too difficult to have like 10 different Sodorini and try and size them up. So I got rid of all of them but two. So I kept my original Sodorini, which I will show you in a bit. And then I kept this one because of how silver it is this was the silveriest one of them all and yeah she's she's growing at a very 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 slow pace it took my sodorini two years to get to the point that it is now i think two years to get to where it is today so i'm not really expecting a lot to happen to this this year honestly i'm just trying to keep it happy i'm trying to keep it not looking really mangled um but yeah this is one of the last remaining sodorini that i have quick little feature on this guy, my philodendron Coelia round. Last time I featured this was in my ugly leaves video. Um, won't go into detail about why it was in that video. You can watch it if you'd like, but she has held on to her leaves a little bit more than she did before. I did recently chop it. Oh, it's um, I air layered this one and um, chopped it from the main plant and I'm notching the bottom which is also in another video if you care to watch that as well. Um, but right now she's kind of just like in a rehab state. I just put it on a pole to keep it upright um, but not again not really expecting much from this plant like ever because it kind of hates me. Pudge is upset that I've closed the door. He does not. Pudge does not like closed doors in this house. If Pudge was a parent, he would be the type of parent that would like remove the doors if he had it his way. Next one, really quick, is the uh, Alocasia heterophylla dragon's breath that I got from Amanda as a corm. Um, I'm not gonna lie, after I repotted this into pawn, I thought that she was gonna croak and her the first leaf that pushed out of it just quickly died and turned yellow. But luckily I was able to save it and another one has pushed out. So this is what we're working with now. Not much to look at, but just happy that she's alive. This one's kind of gross because of this situation. I have been dealing with fungus gnats for a bit. Some people have recommended neem, neem something in the, in the, as a drench, which I need to look into because I'm over the yellow stickies everywhere, sticking to my body, sticking to other leaves. I'm just, yeah, I, that's not the life I want to live anymore. But anyway, this is Patricia. Hey, 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 kids, kids, Patricia. This is my philodendron Patriciae. Recently repotted this one into like a tree fern fibery soil mix. Also got um, a new pole on it, which is a mix of chopped up sphagnum moss and tree fern fiber. And uh, not seeing any roots so far on it. But this one really was repotted not too long ago. Um, there are some new roots down here. I won't give you too much of an update on that since I am doing repot and chat updates now. But yeah, this one was imported back in 2021, I think. It's kind of taken a while to get to this point. I mean, she still is a little bit not wonderful, okay? I am not the best at growing the Patricia. I will fully admit that right now. But she's at least starting to size up because these leaves before were not giving what I wanted it to give. And this is something more my speed. So again, in no drainage. I feel like most of my plants are in no drainage. I have a goal of getting every plant out of drainage holes. Weird goal, weird goal to have, but you know, the heart wants what it wants. Patricia is doing seemingly okay. Could probably look a little bit better, but you know, I'm gonna, from what she looked like historically, I will take it. Also living in the same house as Patricia is my philodendron um, heterocraspidon. This one I will say is my first 
sort of strap leaf philodendron love. Um, the first moment I saw it, I knew that it was a plant that I had to have forever and ever. It has lived up to every expectation I've had of it. I will say it's a bit more, I'm not gonna say more finicky than the Patriciae. It's harder to root, that's for sure, with the Patriciae. I feel like this thing took me forever to get roots on. And even now, it's in a pond and tree fern fiber mix, which my philodendrons love that combination. I repotted this not too long ago and I'm not seeing any new roots. She just like, she just doesn't like to root, but she pushes out leaves whether or not she has roots or not. This is the newest, yeah, this is the newest leaf on it. Um, had a little bit of difficulty coming out of the catafil, which is why there's a bit of a rip. Um, these are really, really old leaves. It doesn't shed leaves that often, but the slow deterioration of them, um, yeah, you're gonna look at them for longer. But I, I think that she historically has always done better than my Patriciae. Um, I just try to not fuss with her too much. I just give her some water, give her some light, give her some um, whispers of sweet nothings and um, leave her the hell alone. The last plant in that EXO is my Soderini, which some people refuse to believe it's a Soderini. They say it's a Soderoi. And look, I, there's, it's on a pond pole. So anytime I take this plant out, there's just ponds spilling everywhere. I wanna get, I wanna get this onto a mossy tree fern fiber mix in my next repot. But anyway, I'm not, guys, I'm not trying to push any agenda. I don't get like, like, I don't know. I don't get paid every time I convince someone that a Soderini is a Soderoi. I, there's no reason for me to lie about any of that. I just purchased this as a Soderini and um, it took a long freaking time for it to size up. What is my hand? It took, it took a long time to get to this size leaf. And this is not even large. This is not even close to the size of what, how large my Soderoi, my variegated Soderoi used to be. Um, it took kind of a long time to switch from petiolar sheaths to catafils. She's doing a lot right now. You guys, I need to put this back. It's gonna drive me, I'm gonna be stepping on pawn everywhere. Um, but anyway, I have yet to hear from not that I've contacted him, but I'm kind of just waiting for him to do an update. Um, if you guys follow um, Bill Rodolante on any social media platform, he was one of the people working in the labs to shrink the internodes of a Soderoi. They ended up just shrinking the leaves. He claimed that it never moves into Cataphil, which kind of surprised me considering mine did move into Cataphil after about a year. Yeah, his, but his Soderini is larger than mine, like much larger than mine. And I will throw a photo up without spilling pond, but this is what his Soderini looks like or Soderini small form. And you can see it's, I mean, obviously I've never seen it in person, but it looks like it's about like triple the size of my leaves. And I have a hard time believing that that plant is still in petiolar sheath form and is not pushing out of a catafil. Anyway, that rant, done, we're done. But here's my Soderini or Soderoi, as some of you guys would like to call it. She needs to be repotted badly, and I don't think I'm ever going to do a pond pole with this pole again because it's raining pond. Honestly, I'm not going to be showing you guys the plants that are in my little rehab area where my old EXO or my small EXO used to be, like down here, because they make me very unhappy and I don't want to talk about them. <laughs> but you guys kind of saw who was down there, a few low variegation albos. Some Mayoi cuttings, some Pertusa cuttings, Elegans, Majestic, you know, the whole the whole thing. So this chair. So we're gonna move on to this shelf now. First plant is I call this the Angry Gloriosum, and the reason that I call it an Angry Gloriosum is because it comes from a plant that always looks angry. Does this Gloriosum not look furious and livid to you? She looks like she just had some road rage. 
and this is the newest leaf on it. Um, this one has kind of been a more difficult Gloriosum to grow for me. I also cleaned the chunk and like 10 growth points popped up, so that's what we're working with down here. But yeah, this one just, I don't know, it's, it's much more difficult for me than the Verde, which is like the regular green, ugh, the regular green Gloriosum and even more difficult for me than the white veins which i showed you a little peek at earlier but it is one of my favorites i just feel like this one has so much character and like the the veins are so white and like so prominent and these like sinuses they just look so violent and just yeah like angry so as much of a pain as this one has kind of been to me i continue to grow it and will continue to grow it for as long as it will have me. Um, we've got some sad alocasias. Um, I used to have my alocasia in an XO. I Not recently, but maybe about, I wanna say like a month and a half ago, I moved them all out except for my Friday. And the adjustment has been tough. It has been tough. So I'm gonna tell you right now that just by the looks of this leaf, cause I watered this yesterday, this should have at least uncurled. Oh, by the way, this is my mellow. Looks really sad. But um, this should have uncurled, which leads me to believe that there is probably root rot on this thing. Um, but there's a new leaf coming. But again, not much to see. I do love the mellow. I just, I feel like I left it in here for way too long. It's literally still in the original nursery pot. And I think this has been in here for like three years. <laughs> Maybe more. My next sad alocasia is my alocasia green dragon. Can you chill out? Um, yeah, this one freaking hated being out of a greenhouse as well. Um, this one used to have like four, four or five leaves on it when it was in the XO, but they were all sort of like this large. It wasn't really sizing up for me that much. Um, a new leaf has emerged now. This is the first leaf that's come out since it's been on this shelf and she is definitely struggling a little bit but i think because i don't love this plant like it's not an alocasia that like i die for i don't know i just don't really pay it much attention but i will admit that like large green dragons are really really nice like fern has a really huge one which makes me like want to try a little harder but she's a little crispy I forgot the name of this one, but I will throw it up on the screen. Um, this is one of the newer alocasias that I acquired from Lauren. Um, these were popping up all over the stores locally here and kind of everywhere, I think. Everywhere has sort of given it a different name, but this is the ID that I think it is. Um, and I just really love the shape of this leaf it looks like a lily pad i love how silvery it is it's kind of got the same um sort of sheen and texture and color as like a silver sword so if you're a fan of the philodendron silver sword i think you'll really like this plant and yeah it's been i mean it's been pretty fun to grow this one did have a pretty gnarly case of mealybugs and i had it isolated for months and i was treating it for months with alcohol sprays and I feel like we're finally mealybug free. I mean, I hope she's mealybug free because she's been living on this shelf with all of my other alocasia. And so far I have not seen a single mealybug here. I just fully inspected it last night. Um, but yeah, she's, she's, she's pretty cute. I do need to repot her though because she's just living in perlite. I am a great, great plant parent. Next up is my alocasia skeleton. Maybe I'll put it on this side since we've got a white backdrop sort of. So here's my scalprum. This is another alocasia that I just freaking love so much. Um, I think it's a pretty even tie between my Friday and this scalprum for favorite alocasia and they both happen to be seriously some of the most easygoing alocasias I can think of or in my experience. These leaves require no editing. When I take photos of these, it's like just done, just upload, ready to go. They're just so dark and sultry and like sinister looking and I love it so much. This leaf is thick, thick. She's a thick, thick girl and I love her. Um, she's got a new leaf, which is really tiny, but you guys, when I tell you, when I tell you this plant, 
loves pushing inflows. Oh my gosh, I literally got eight freaking inflows in a row. I was like, I am not doing anything with you. I want a leaf. Finally, she pushed out this leaf, which is freaking so tiny. But anyway, there are um, other plants or there are separate plants growing in here. You can see this other new leaf coming in. So I, this was one of the corms that I grew separately and then I ended up potting it together. And then this little guy here was a corm that just randomly popped out and I decided to just keep it so that we can have a nice bushy scalp from hopefully soon. And this one is also living in no drainage, very, very, very dirty, dirty vessel. Um, super root bound, probably needs to be repotted, but ignorance is bliss and I'm just gonna pretend I didn't see that. Last plant on this second shelf is my Monstera Escaletto. Won't go too in detail about this one since I just featured this recently. Chopped it for a friend. Um, sold the top cutting and now it's pushing out a new growth point. Hopefully we have better luck on this pole because the moment I let it outgrow the lazy pole that it was on, it just reverted in size so fast. So as easy as I find it to size it up from just a small little prop because this started as a wet stick and then turned into like a monster in no time. But like the second it runs out of pole, it just does not enjoy, it does not enjoy life. So we've got a lot of pole to work with now. I am hoping, hoping I can get it back to the size that it was before. Um, I recently repotted this as well and um, I can see some new roots. So seemingly happy. I'm ready to glow this thing back up because for a while, this was the only plant that was getting me out of bed in the morning. And I wanna be back in that place. We're gonna keep trucking along here. The next one is a Hoya, which is really random, and that's because I don't know where else to put it. I'm gonna be honest with you, I have no clue where to put this guy. Doesn't fit in my Hoya cabinet anymore. Doesn't fit on my shelf in the living room. Kind of does not fit in my bedroom. She's got this long, is this called tendril? Someone taught me the name and then I forgot it, just escaped me. But anyway, this is my Hoya Publicalix. Got this as, I would say, a pretty large plant from Alice. It has definitely grown a ton in my care. Um, I have it on a trellis from the Pup and Bud. I don't think Andrew is making these trellises anymore, which is such a shame because they are so sturdy. They're metal and it hasn't corroded or anything in um, a no drainage vessel. But um, yeah, it's just kind of like an easy Hoya that you don't really have to think of too much. Obviously you can see she's just growing like crazy. I'm just kind of waiting for this thing to get long enough so that I can wrap it around here and have it facing upward so it doesn't die like you guys taught me. But yeah, this is that guy. I still have to find like a proper place for it because it, it's a little weird and out of place on the shelf. <laughs> Next one, this is one of my faves. And this is a philodendron mexicanum. I recently repotted her in a video as well. I'm gonna try and get her on this side so it's a little easier to see. But um, this is another one of my philodendrons that really don't require my um, blood, sweat, tears, and soul to grow well. It kind of just has the will to live. And it's got these fun little leaves that have these little bunny ears, that long leaf that I like and this beautiful freaking abaxial color that just makes me drool every single time. So um, yeah, she's gotten pretty large. She, this is the first time that she's been on like a proper pole. Sorry, I don't really know where to position myself with this one. This is the first time she's been on a proper pole. She's always been either poleless or just on a bamboo stake, barely and the leaves have sized up no matter the conditions I give it, no matter if I forget to water, no matter how small the vessel is. I do not see any new roots just yet, which is a little concerning, but um, I also have a lot of faith in this plant because it's just been one of my most resilient. Um, it's one of my older plants. Um, I think I acquired this in a trade in 2020, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this one is probably going to outgrow this shelf sometime soon. I actually think a lot of these plants are going to outgrow my shelf soon. So as much as I really am protesting this idea, I might need to disassemble the whole thing 
and maybe get rid of one shelf and make the shelves just like larger, like larger gaps in between. Cause this one is like right up, getting super close to that top shelf, so. Here is my second Summer Glory. This one is the backup for my original one that I showed you from my friend Krista. Um, I picked this one up at a garden center in Sacramento. It's called Green Acres if you are Sacramento native. I picked this one up at the Folsom location, I believe. There were only two. They were kind of tucked away and like hidden under a bunch of ferns. And I'm so happy I found it. So my mom grabbed um, one plant. I grabbed the other and I really am not trying to collect doubles, but I do have doubles for plants that I really love um, because I, I fully believe that if you love a plant that you should always have a backup of it just in case something happens. It's got a new leaf on the way. As much as I don't want to chop this, I do think that it's getting a bit long um, in terms of how long this like rhizome is. And I want to chop it for my friend Krista because I got my original plant from her and I believe hers died while she was away on vacation or something. So I do want to give maybe this one a chop for her so she can start over again. If she doesn't get one before that happens, that is. Um, anyway, yeah, this is much bigger than the one I first showed you. But honestly, that one is on track to get as big as this one in no time. and. I think this one's going to have to move out of the plant room. I bet you maybe by like the end of summer it's going to be too big to fit on this shelf. I feel like I have not shown this plant on this channel in a while, but this is my Begonia Sinbad and she's been through she's been through some stuff. Um she is a very very fast and the furious growing begonia. She grows faster than I can keep up with and I have chopped her down to basically a stump. I want to say six times since I've had it. I actually gave my full plant, I believe, to my mom. I kept a stick. I kept a stick and it's turned into this. And I've already chopped this thing down multiple times. And in doing that, it has activated growth from the bottom. And it's just, it's getting large again. And the reason why this plant, okay, I love it. Don't get me wrong. It is one of my favorite begonias still. I feel like it looks like a Christmas morning. But this plant stresses me out because it pushes out so many flowers all the time. And the flowers don't last very long, um, especially if you let it dry out, all those flowers will dry up. And it's so messy. I just constantly have like a puddle of flowers everywhere. Like I can imagine why growing a begonia outside would be really nice because, you know, it just gets swept away in the wind. But in my house, I'm the one that has to clean it. So. Yeah, I just, I tend to chop this one back a lot because I don't want it to get too unruly and too large because at its largest, I think the stem was like this long and it was just kind of hanging. And while it was very beautiful, um, it was kind of stressful to have a plant that big. So I think the Begonia Sinbad is always going to be a plant that I'm going to prune back to keep small just because the, the growth is so vigorous that like, I know it's not going to stay a small plant for very long, but um, I still highly recommend this begonia. It has a really, really fun, fuzzy texture to it. The leaves are so beautiful. It's got this pink little booty hole on it and like really, really white um, like dots. And it's just a fun, it's a really fun plant to have. So uh, yeah, she's still alive and well. There's people that have asked me what happened to my Sinbad and She's, she's been around, kicking around, just kind of stressing me out, but she has still found a place in this apartment. The last plant on the shelf I'm going to show you with my phone, just because it's attached to the shelf. Here is my philodendron myoi, which I've chopped down a million bajillion times. Um, I actually gave my mom the top cutting of this plant and hers is growing so beautifully. I don't know how she does it, but I'm just so crap at growing myoi. So yeah, this is it. Um, I just recently chopped the top off, which you can see the top right there. And it is living in tree fern fiber and pond and honestly probably needs a proper pole, but I'm kind of over it at this point with the myoi. I'm not quite at the point where I'm going to get rid of it, but getting, getting kind of close. 
I'm feeling so low energy and a little boring today. I don't know if that's really coming through in this video, but I have been violently throwing up for two days because I've had food poisoning. So this is my first day sort of back at work and out of bed. So it's been a week. It's been a week. <laughs> um, so now we're going to move to the top shelf. This is one of my Philodendron Billetiers. Um, I recently chopped and propagated this plant as well. So this is what's remaining of the top cutting. And I'm telling you, this is just a plant that I just always want to have in my collection in every room if I can. Um, the only thing is it kind of has a wild <laughs> growth pattern. So in that way, it can get a bit unruly if you have it like on a packed shelf. But um, yeah, I just couldn't get myself to get rid of this because I just love this plant so much. I know that I have a really, really large one in my living room, which I will show you in part three of my plant room or my plant house plant tour. But yeah, this is my smaller one. She's actually do, done really well since the chop and the repot. You can see lots of new roots also in party pond. The caterpill is getting really large which is a good sign for a plant that's sizing up. Um, I can't quite pinpoint which one is the newest leaf on it, which doesn't really matter because they're all kind of the same size, but I think if I had to guess, this one is the newest one. And they're just so like, I don't know, they're so delicious and sharp and I just love like the orange petioles on them. And seriously, I, I would do bad things, bad things for variegated Billetier. That one's still on my list. I recently saw one in person for the first time and it has only sparked the flame, even sparked the flame, sparked the fuel, fueled the flame, sparked the fire. It has made me want it even more. So we're still manifesting. Um, I'm never gonna pay the prices that they are so for now, the green one will do. And honestly, I think I still like the green one more than the variegated one, I think. And it's another really easy plant to grow. I think um, where people struggle with the Billetier, um, sometimes you'll notice that like the leaves all face down. Like they'll kind of like flop to one side and just like kind of face this way. And I, for me, I've just noticed that the Billies do a lot better when you have an overhead light directly above it. Um, I don't have that current situation with my other billy. That one has been a little bit more easy, but historically with my other billies, because I've had like maybe four in the past, yeah, it doesn't do really well unless there's a light right on top of it. So try um, increasing the light for longer during the day if possible with your billy if you're noticing the leaves facing down, because when it has that kind of growth pattern, I can see why people wouldn't enjoy it. But yeah, don't expect those Instagram leaves that you see where they're all just like facing forward. I don't know how they freaking do that. But for me, my billies have always sort of grown like this, just kind of wild and unruly. We're not gonna, we're not gonna talk about this one for too long. This is my variegated soderoi that I recently chopped because it looked like a tree, like a Dr. Seuss tree. It looked crazy. And honestly, I've just kind of neglected it since the chop. It's just been living in water. It can be transitioned soon. These are actually two plants. I was thinking of getting rid of one because I don't necessarily need two of them. Just haven't decided who I'm gonna keep. I am definitely loving my Sodorini more than, than this one these days. Next up is my... Is it something I said? God, I hate when she does that. It freaks me the hell out. Next one is my alocasia cupria. This one I grew from a corm from my friend Jane. Um, it's been a slow and steady uphill battle with this one. I feel like everybody is able to size up a cupria so fast, except for me. Everyone except for me. Like I've had this longer than my fry deck and my fry deck is like a gigantic beast compared to this one. But you know, I am really enjoying how it looks now, <laughs> these little alien bobbleheads. She's, I mean, she is gaining some, some size. Like you can see the oldest leaf versus 
the newer ones. Like we're getting there. It's just a very slow, it's a slow marathon to get there. Um, but Cupri is doing well. I do find her to be somewhat easier than the other allocations that I have in my collection. Although I feel like I pay more attention to this one because it has sentimental value in that I got it from my friend Jing and I grew it from a little corm and so I just kind of feel like I have to baby this thing. Um, but yeah, this is her. I don't know what the kids are calling this these days, philodendron SP Columbia, philodendron SP Silver, philodendron SP El Guapo or philodendron El Guapo. I don't know the name, but this is my favorite one out of all of the ones that I own because of how tight the venation is. I'm sure if you are not new to this channel, you're probably tired of me saying that about this plant, but it is, it's my favorite. I can't, you can't deny how delicious these leaves are. So this is the newest one to emerge and it's so pretty. She's definitely gaining some size since um, repotting it into this Muji storage container thing. And yeah, I'm quite pleased. I am quite smitten with the growth on this. This one actually surprised me because I thought, I don't know, I thought after that last repot, it was going to take a downhill tumble because I chopped it as well and the propagation did not make it, unfortunately. But she did not waver in growth. This leaf is a thing of beauty, if not one of my favorite leaves right now. Um, we'll see if I can keep her this happy, but she seems to be doing okay outside of a greenhouse in these very, very rough conditions, low humidity, high temperatures, um, doesn't seem to mind it. This one does not push out nearly as much EFN as my other philodendron El Guapo. Um, still quite a, a little bit, like you can maybe see it's got some tackiness to it but i do try and shower this one pretty often so that i can keep any spider mites off of it um melt away that efn this one is one i was very excited to show you guys because i haven't i feel like i haven't done like a new leaves or a favorites video in a long time but if this was a favorites video this 100 percent would have made the list oh my gosh i really don't want to take this one down you guys it's so heavy do it. I'll do it for you. Don't say I never do anything for you guys. Oh my word. This one, oh, probably one of my biggest plants right now, which I cannot take credit for. Um, so this is a philodendron ninger tent. I don't know how this ended up with me. This is one of my favorite plants in Alice's collection. Like if I could choose one plant to take of hers, it was the name. And uh, somehow I've manifested that although I do just see this as more of a foster situation Part of me feels like Alice will miss this plant later down the line And I'm just trying to keep it alive long enough until that moment But um, it has outgrown her space. So she has <laughs> brought it to me This used to have so many leaves. It used to have like six other leaves on it but they were all kind of like facing different ways this is a very EFN heavy plant. Um, it's kind of hard to tell, but the other leaves were just like consumed by extra floral nectary spots. And I couldn't fit on this shelf with all of those leaves on it, so I just chopped them off. It was very hard, but um, I think the plant is happier now without all of those leaves. And yeah, I repotted it into this long grenade looking planter from the dollar store. It was not a dollar, I think it was actually 425 which isn't bad um, my mom just picked me up some um, nice plant uh, self-watering uh, rectangle planters which um, I'm not gonna tell you just yet because I want to wait till she orders it I don't want it to like sell out um, but I will tell you once I get mine um, but anyway yeah this is the name it's very heavy so I'm gonna put it back now but holy smokes I cannot believe this is in my house I am very afraid that I'm going to uh, slowly send this into an early grave but so far so good to be honest last three on this shelf oh my gosh i almost dislocated my shoulders just getting this thing off this is a begonia lucerna i don't know why i keep bringing begonias home i almost brought another begonia home the begonia julau i've been 
eyeing that one at Lauren's shop, but I keep reminding myself that begonias kind of stress me out. Look at the reach on this guy. He's, it's, it's like a bamboo stick. I mean, I mean, she's solid. This is another plant that is kind of stressing me out because of how vigorous the growth is. Someone told me to snip the top growth off so that it kind of stops growing from here for a while and pushes out some growth at the base, which it did. I snipped that top off. I snipped it off like a and it pushed out this brand new growth point down at the bottom and even though these are new leaves, they're already like so huge and then it also pushed out, did it push out another one? Oh, I think I snipped it off um, but it kept regrowing <laughs> it kept regrowing from the top um, but now the leaves are a lot smaller than it was before so it looks a little bananas but truth be told i think the next time i go to california i'm gonna give it a mega mega snip and i'm gonna bring more to my mom because i think that she can disperse them among my aunts and friends and whoever but yeah i think i'm just ready to get this back down to a baby plant again because this is this is a little much we're doing a little bit too much with with not enough resources and space not much to see here. Um, I chopped up one of my Vitara foliums recently and just kind of put it in here to see what happens. Um, I'm not quite sure what I was expecting, nor do I know what the plan is with this guy, but I sort of just have it in here because I was too sad to throw it away. So now it just lives on a top shelf as a single strap. But honestly, the single strap is kind of a vibe. Like if this was just like mounted, and like put on a wall, I can kind of see it, but potted on a shelf looks a little strange. But I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to leave him out of this tour because I do have him. But it is. I think this was one that I was thinking of selling. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Last plant on that shelf is my Willy Wonka. The top. I'm gonna call it a philodendron Billy Black because that seems to be the more popular opinion. Some people said that it is the hybrid of the Billy Atabapuense, although from my recollection, the last time I did any kind of research on this plant, there was like no proof that like that hybrid actually existed. Feel free to fact check me, drop any links. I am always searching for new information to fill my brain. Yeah, I got this one from my sister, I think last year. She got She had her second kid and life has just been kind of crazy for her. Um, this one started to stress her out with how large it was getting, so she begged me, just begged me, really had to beg me, a lot of convincing, to take this home. But honestly, this was one plant that I really wanted in her collection. You guys know how much I love my Billy. Um, and this is like the evil twin sister because it's just a lot darker. It's got like the burgundy abaxials, and it's just a really, really fun plant. But I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I, I am too stressed out by this growth. I don't know why, like no matter the conditions I give it, this one just likes to droop and hang really low like that. Like all the petioles sort of face downward and never wants to like perk up. So I just have it on the top now because it's the only place that I can really fit it. But yeah. All right, that wraps up that shelf. I'm not gonna show you my veggies and herbs cause they look cray cray and I did show them in my week of plant to do's from ouch from april so you can check that video so now we're just gonna be moving into here i showed this on my instagram recently and the reason i called this my atrocity of a begonia malachostica is because that's what it is it's doing things that a plant should never do to a person it is confusing me in ways that I've never been confused in this hobby before. I have heard of begonia propagation through stem cuttings and through leaf cuttings, but never have I seen this. I don't know what to call it. I don't know what sent it from hell, but she's here and she lives in my house. And the reason why I haven't 
burned this thing yet is because there's a sick, sick, sick part of me that wants to know what it's gonna look like once it's fully grown out. But the leaves are getting bigger every day. There are some like full like baby leaves on it now. Um, and I'm just kind of imagining that it's gonna look something like this top cutting, which honestly is crazy. All of the new leaves that are coming out of the top are just so miniature. They're not like fully growing out. And I think it's because it's growing everywhere. Like how can we grow full leaves up here if you're growing like 7 million leaves down here? So I don't know what, I don't, I don't know what this is, but um, this is my begonia malachostica. <laughs> I'm not going to give you any guide, kind of like care advice or anything unless you want it to look like this. Um, then I guess pot it in no drainage, in pawn, and that's it. Next up is my Epipremnum Pinatum Albo Vergata. Um, I have forced myself to love this plant. I do think it's really cool, obviously, like I love the variegation on it. I love these like cool little pinations that it grows and these little pinhole fenestrations. But I think that I have a sour taste in my mouth because of how difficult it has been to get any kind of pination on this plant. I feel like there are people like my friend and neighbor Nick downstairs who shoves it in a corner, doesn't put it on a pole or anything rarely fertilizes it and it grows into this giant monster. His Epipremnum pinatum leaves are like this large, if not bigger, growing in his living room. So I'm a little salty. I think if I didn't see his plant, I wouldn't be as salty, but I'm salty. I'm a salty girl. But you know, we're kind of getting somewhere. Nowhere fast, but getting somewhere nonetheless. Um, I did recently repot this as well into a soily tree fern fibery mix. It is also on a tree fern fiber pole on one of Lauren's poles. And this is where we are. This is a fun one that I don't really show that often on this channel. This is my Ficus Shiveriana. I acquired this over Chris the Christmas break. Um, Alice picked this up for me. And um, honestly, I thought it would be dead by now. Uh, the leaves that grew in my care um, at first was this little guy and this little guy that they both look like toes and I think it's because it was still adjusting and um, this is the new leaf that looks not like a toe it looks normal variegation is cute no browning and now it's pushing out another one right here I know it's kind of hard to tell but there's a new guy coming in there. And honestly, I still really, really enjoy this plant. I love it just as much as um, when I first got it or even when I just saw it in a photo. And this is a plant that you really could only own if you knew the right collector or if you were willing to pay the price that they were to import it. And I had neither of those things, the money or the connections to get one. So I was really happy when they started popping up um, locally. And it was like, honestly, the last plant that I thought would go into cultivation. So it's just like a really nice surprise and um, I'm super happy with it. I'm, I'm hoping that it gets larger. I feel like everyone who has been growing this and purchased it sort of around the same time frame that I got mine. It's just growing like a little bush. Like it's not getting any bigger like like a rubber tree rubber tree. But again, I think it's been so new that it's just, you know, it's taking some time. But I'm just keeping an eye to see if this stem gets any thicker because that's how you know that we're on the on route to get larger. But at the same time, I'm kind of happy that it's this small because I can just stick it in a greenhouse and not worry about it and it's not taking a bunch of space because if this was like a tree, I don't know where the hell it would go. So I don't know why I'm wanting it to even get larger. Um, this is my Philodendron Ring of Fire. This is, I'm not gonna say it was an impulse purchase, um, but this was a plant that popped up uh, late last year locally in our greenhouses and they were selling for literally like five to ten dollars and so i said that like if the opportunity came that i would have the chance to buy one because the chances of me owning a caramel marble anytime in my 30s is probably very low so this is the next best thing of course it's not as in my opinion as beautiful as the caramel marble but it kind of scratches that itch to be honest, um, this is not a plant that I'm constantly 
I don't know, excited for, or like even when a new leaf is coming, I'm not like, oh my God, like the way like I am still with my Tordum or like my Florida Beauty. I feel like those plants are still like when I have a new leaf, I'm just like on edge and I just can't wait to see it. So yeah, still kind of learning to be fully in love with this plant, but it's been pretty easy going, definitely a lot easier than the phyll philodendron, I don't know what it's called, philodendron tiger tooth, philodendron jungle, Boogie, Philodendron, Nero. I don't, I feel like it has so many names, but I do love that plant. I used to have it, but it just pushed out so much EFN that it would just be overtaken by spots that like I just couldn't enjoy it. So this plant still sort of has that same issue, but just not as, I don't know, I guess not as prevalent as the the green one so um yeah that's been a nice surprise because i thought by now this thing would have been would have been overtaken by spots but she looks pretty normal um new leaf looks really cute i just would love for this thing to size up if possible oh there's a mite <gasps> my mites are awake good morning i recently got mites and i didn't think that they woke up but i'm seeing I'm seeing some little babies. Okay, cool. Anyway, this is one of my um, beloved plants from Amanda, even though I can never remember the name. I Like the name, it enters my brain and then it quickly just comes out the other ear. So um, anyway, I have loved this plant ever since I saw it in her collection. I never wanted to ask for it because I am not that kind of person, but she just knows, she knows me so well. She knows me and Alice so well. So. She sent us this and um, I love it. She recently told me that she was kind of struggling to grow hers for a bit, but I'm not sure, like I feel like she grows so many of her plants just like in her living room, whereas I'm really sort of babying this thing inside of a really warm greenhouse. But yeah, the, these leaves, these little Mickey Mouse ears are so freaking fun. And um, the texture on it is very, um, what's the word for this? Why was, why was I originally thinking sticky? It's not sticky, it's like, not velvety, it's very leathery. Oh, um, pleathery. Pleathery, kind of, yeah, uh, kind of pleathery. And it's a thicker leaf. It's not super, super thick, but definitely thicker than I would say it looks. Um, this one's still hardening off, that's why it looks really light. But this leaf looks so funny. I really like the shape of this leaf. It looks like angry and mean. And then this one is kind of like dopey. <laughs> my mandula. I have two mandulas. I have one growing as a vining plant on my living room shelf. And then I have this one that I am trying to size up Craig Milrun style. But you know, I am the exact opposite of Craig Milrun. Our skill level could not be more opposite. But I'm trying. She's definitely giving it a solid effort again. Um, I tried doing this once and that ended as an epic, epic fail. I don't know, maybe I'll have more luck this time around, but so far we're still, we're just, we're kind of just starting off. But yeah, this one's pretty fun. It's got some like interesting variegation. I kind of hope that more of these like round, rounder leaves come back. Although I chose a pretty like weird specimen to work with. This propagation specifically, like, almost didn't want to be a mandula, but I am kind of interested to see where it goes. This is a plant that I've been hyping like crazy this year. If you guys follow me on Instagram, this is my um, Uliarum Donburnsii. And look at her, she's so cute. She looks like a little, little angel. I did kind of struggle with this plant a bit. Um, I'm not sure why. So I was getting like these crispy tips and crispy tips here and my only uneducated opinion via observation is that um i've read that this likes higher humidity but this greenhouse here is not very high humidity it's high warmth but not high humidity um and i think that this would probably do better like in an exo probably but i don't know i mean i guess i could shove it in here but at the same time, my I, I sort of have like a new outlook on how I want to go about this whole plant parenthood thing. I used to really want to create the perfect, 
perfect ideal conditions for these plants, like what they would prefer in their natural habitat. And I was like, I'm gonna put greenhouses everywhere. Everyone's gonna get a greenhouse. Everyone gets high humidity. But just sort of as I've you know, gone more and more into this hobby, I've just realized that like plants are highly adaptable. Some take longer than others. And with, I don't know, enough time and patience, you can sort of acclimatize things to the conditions that you want rather than the conditions that they want. And I don't want to fill my house with greenhouses anymore. I don't want to have multiple tents. I, I just, I want, I want to be able to like enjoy my plants. I want to see them. I want to put them on shelves. I want to put them in my living room. So now I'm sort of in that mindset where I'm trying to not baby all of my plants too much this being one of them. Only because I would love to not have to keep this in a greenhouse indefinitely. This is another plant that I can see like putting it in a really cute pot and then just putting it like on a windowsill or putting it on my shelf or something. I don't want this to be living in a greenhouse indefinitely. So anyway, um, this is one of the newer leaves, um, seemingly okay, but I'm, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty certain in no time this thing is going to start crisping at the edges and right now i'm not really spraying my plants all that often i used to be an avid sprayer but when you spray in a greenhouse you um, increase your risks of um, things like you know fungal issues on the leaves and stuff and i don't really have that issue anymore ever since i really cut down on spraying i'm only spraying once a week really in my greenhouse plants to foliar feed them but other than that they just kind of get what they get syngonium chia pence one of my favorite syngoniums this one is really really cute the uh growth just kind of stresses me out because of how long these petioles are i don't really know what the plan is with this because it's going to outgrow this greenhouse pretty soon it doesn't need high humidity i just always kind of kept it in there because i didn't know where else to put it but it's a really fun plant. Um, I have shined these leaves with a microfiber cloth, which is why they look so much shinier than some of these newer leaves up here. But um, yeah, if you have been looking for a syngonium that isn't really a syngonium, like, you know, that typical syngonium leaf, this one and the, what's that other one? The Chia Pence Frosted Heart, that's a really fun one too. But I prefer this green one. I think that this one is just like, has that classic, classic plant leaf look like you know when people draw plants and like they just do like the typical plant look i feel like they're always drawing the chia pins. i don't know that's just my opinion here is my fry deck just being a freaking show off if you if current me talked to past me when i first acquired this plant as a corm and you showed me this plant and said this is what your plant's gonna end up looking like i wouldn't have believed you not for a single freaking second because this thing is a thing of beauty look at this new leaf i mean i'm glad that there's some kind of green on it but she's really pushing <laughs> she's pushing the limits lately but i am obsessed i'm obsessed with this like neonish yellowish greenish color that i'm getting on it instead of this like elbow white i almost prefer it now um, and you can kind of see it's like this really like faded washed out yellowy green color and it's so beautiful. I have mentioned this before where I feel like this plant specifically pushes out um, like a really highly variegated leaf like this or like that one but then pushes out leaves like this where you're keeping that good balance of green. But yeah, it's just getting so big. Like, look at it in comparison to my head. Oh gosh, this corn, corn, <laughs> this corn is coming alive. Oh gosh, there's there are two corms in here now that have been trapped for months that have been wanting to come out. And as much as I want to rescue them, it's just been growing so great in this vessel. Although I do think that it's time to size it up. There's a good amount of exposed rhizome up here that I want to get buried but yeah I was very excited to show you guys this because I I don't know I have I have not been showing it that much in terms of like featuring it because I feel like I really really shoved this plant down your throat last year and I was like we're gonna ease up a little bit but she's doing great you know she's had spider mites before 
Um, she even had thrips before, but the leaves have really just kind of remained really, really beautiful and pristine, even being attacked by bugs. I think the only issue I've had are really white leaves melting like this, but this only happens when a new leaf is coming. So this one is brand new. This one only fully unfurled. I want to say yesterday or the day before and um, this has just continued to grow and melt off as this one has grown so i'm not mad at it honestly i can't believe i've been able to grow it to this size but seriously it's not hard this is by far i mean it's pretty tied with the scalp rum indefinitely easier than the green version of this and i will fight anyone who disagrees with me i won't actually fight you i have no upper body strength. While we're looking at fried eggs, I'm going to show you two of the corms that I propagated from my mother plant. So I actually had a total of, I think I had five corms that I harvested. I think I gave two to my mom, one to my aunt, and I kept two. So you can tell that one is stronger than another one. I harvested these at the same time. The corm sizes were about the same, but this one is like so much bigger than this guy. So this is the new leaf that came out on this one and it's so tiny. Um, but this one's got this new leaf coming and it's so pretty. I feel like this, this leaf just looks like an emoji of a fried egg. It's so adorable, but yeah, really cute. I was supposed to sell these, but of course the hoarder in me has kept them. This plant, this plant, I do love it so much. It's a great pink princess with amazing genes and I'm so happy that Plantsum so generously sent this to me. But man, I cannot figure out, I can't figure it out. Like these, uh, these spots here, like this browning on it, all of this. I don't know what it's from. So many mixed mixed opinions online, but it seems like it's something that plagues the pink princess it, uh, pretty commonly or pretty often. But some of the new leaves have turned out pretty um, decent, like on this second one. It's got that nice like sort of dark cherry color. This new leaf has some variegation on it and doesn't have any browning. So I'm not quite sure what the deal is with it, but um, yeah. I chopped this one for my aunt over Christmas, which is why it looks like this. I do need to repot it, but uh, yeah, I'm just, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to figure this plant out, and so far I have gotten nowhere fast. Okie dokie, my neighbor is blasting their music again. Hopefully you can't hear it, but we're going to, oh, ho, ho, Merry Christmas. We are bringing out the elbows. Oh my gosh, this is the heaviest vessel in the entire world so this is elbow number gosh i can't even remember i've had so many elbows now um my friend pearl basically bought this very large elbow back in 2020 um and we have just chopped and propagated it so many times so i recently repotted this one this leaf is very slowly um, going out, but everything else seems to be looking good. I would show you some of the nice roots that are forming in here, but because the vessel is so dark, you can't really, can't really see it. Can you? Anyway, here's elbow number one. I need to put this down, it's so heavy. I'm gonna feature my elbow um, a little bit longer because it's actually mine to keep. I wasn't convinced that I needed an elbow, but for some reason this one propagation just kind of spoke to me and was like, you're gonna keep me. So with the permission of my friend who owns all of these elbows, I am keeping one. I have a little watcher here, it's a little tiny worm. I got it onto a soil tree fern fiber pole. I'm not seeing any roots on it just yet. I do see some new roots. Rope. I always say that. Routes. Roots. New roots in the substrate, which is good. It's in a LECA and soil mix. This leaf here is brand new and she's really, really pretty. And honestly, I am kind of excited to like have an elbow to grow long term. 
and just see how large I can grow it. Um, it's not that I don't like this plant. I think I'm just, I don't know, I'm more of a green monstera girl and I've propagated so many of these for my friend that I kind of had like elbow burnout and they stopped looking very exciting to me. Um, I don't know, it just, that's just how it turned out. But um, now that I know that I'm keeping one for me, I definitely have grown to love this one even more. Um, so yeah, she's a humble little plant right now, but hopefully in the next few years, um, she's looking like my green one, which is overtaking every space I have, which you will see in part three of the plant tour. I don't even know why I'm showing this to you guys, but this is what remains of the Begonia lubersii that Alice and I got from Amanda. I have tried water propagating this thing and roots grow and then they die. Um, I'm not sure what it wants, but I am ready to hand this off to Alice for her to try because I'm kind of over it. But I'm going to show you what a mature one looks like. It looks nothing like this. It's incredible. It's so good, which is why she sent us another one after we both killed the first one. Um, Cause it's just, it's a begonia that I have to have. I just have to have it. I'm just not very good at growing it. So that's also a problem. Last plant in there is nothing special. My white princess that has just seen, seen better days, truly. I can't even really remember what, I can't remember what happened to this thing. Um, I, I don't know if it was like the leaves melting off. I know I would have shown it in a video, but these leaves were bad enough that I didn't want to look at it anymore, so I just karate chopped them off. And this is what's left. Um, I've not given up on this plant. Um, it's just going through a phase right now. We're just going through a little spat, but hopefully she gets back on track because I did repot this one recently, and I'm hoping that she forgives me for whatever I did to her in the past, but this is her in all her glory. That is it for everyone in the Millsbow. I'm gonna take a break, I'm gonna get out of these freaking jeans, and then we're gonna move into the large EXO. This is very long-winded. I'm tired, but we're gonna get through it. So, um, <clears throat> moving into this EXO. <laughs> Why am I this way? Starting off strong with this beautiful, thriving philodendron glad hands. If you watch the repot that I did this in, you will know it was a it was a it was a fantastic fail, I'll say. So she's back in water, and honestly, I'm just about ready to just grow this in water indefinitely. Ow, something's poking my butt. Um, yeah. She's, she's had a time, she's had a rough time, but these leaves are really fun if you're good at growing the philodendron glad hands, which I clearly am not. But um, I do love all the pedatum leaves, new leaf that died before it ever stood a chance. But we're not gonna give up because I really do, <laughs> I really do like this plant. I think I just need to find the right substrate for it. And, um, I don't know. That's all that's all I've got for you for now for this guy. Oh gosh, this one is dripping. Oh no. Please don't spill on me. Please, 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 please don't spill. Here we are with a philodendron glorious um white veins, maybe. I, I'm not really good at telling all the different forms of gloriosum, but to me, this looks like a white veins. Also, I also get white veins and zebra confused sometimes. But this is the newest leaf to come out on it. Uh, so far, so good with avoiding extra floral nectaries on this Gloriosum. I find that when you grow Gloriosum in non-greenhouse non conditions slash conditions like I give mine, which is just low, low, low humidity, basically no humidity, um, but a lot of warmth, they tend to get really spotty and that's what happened to my once glorious um, Philodendron Gloriosum 
Zebra, I think that's what it was. But yeah, this one has been pretty easy going so far and I think it's because, I don't know. I don't know why, <laughs> I really don't. But I'll take it, I'll definitely take it. She's a beautiful plant. I love this venation so much. I love that on the emergent leaf, I'm gonna try and do this without spilling. It's very pink. Look at that pink little rib in the back. It's so precious and like the new Catafils are super pink as well. Oh, but I'm really pleased with how much this one has been growing. Although I don't know how much longer it can grow in this plant room. So I'm not really in a rush to have this guy size up. Honestly, if we can just keep these leaves and have one leaf like every few months, I would be happy as a clam. Philodendron tenu is also living in the same exo. I don't know what else to say about this. I feel like I've talked about this plant so much. It has definitely done a lot better since last year. Last year it looked really, really sad and pathetic and I will show you a pathetic looking tenu in a bit. Um, it's got this new leaf on the way with a bunch of tears because <laughs> it grew into the freaking pole and it got all like torn and stuff. So, I mean, that was my fault for not keeping an eye on it. And that's probably another reason I should just fill these poles all the way up. I'm just like so stingy with my tree fern fiber. I'm like, I'm not gonna put more than I absolutely need to in the pole right away. Like thinking about filling this entire thing off the bat, just, I don't know, it makes my bank account scream. But yeah, this one's been a fun one to grow. I am really excited to see how large it can get. And hopefully, if we continue along the same path, we should, we should get there. Now, this is the top cutting of my Pertusa. Very sad, very droopy but that's because it's unrooted and it's taking forever to root. Usually these things are super fast in water, but I'm not sure, this one has just kind of like been taking its time. The top, when this was growing up the lazy pole it was on, it ran out of pole like, I don't know, after, I don't know, there's maybe like 10 leaves that didn't have a pole anymore and it, rever it reverted in size. Um, one thing I will say about the Pertusa is that it's very forgiving when you um, don't have, when you run out of pole, it's very forgiving. Whereas you'll have like a really tiny leaf like this and then sometimes the next leaf will be like triple the size, fully fenestrated. So it'll just surprise you. But um, don't ask me why I have a million Pertusas in this house. It's a plant that I really love. I did try and sell um, the two that I have, no bites, and so now she just lives with me. Um, I really had only the intention of keeping the top cutting, and I still hope to sell the other two in the future, but this one is going to stay with me. Here is a downside <laughs> of having overhead lighting and no lights that point directly at the plant. A lot of your plants end up looking like little umbrellas. So this is my Philodendron Genevievianum. I will try and show you the leaves as best as possible. Um, I picked this up from a Equigenera pop-up show last year, 2021, I can't remember. It's all so blurry. Everything after 2020 is a blur to me, okay? It's like all the same time. But um, this is another plant that I am still learning to love. I just, yeah, I guess I thought that I would love it more than I do. And I, I balance back and forth between like really wanting to nurture this plant and just kind of see it to its full potential. But at the same time, I have seen a much larger Genevievianum and it still didn't quite wow me. Um, if you guys have never seen one of these plants, it does have a fuzzy petiole like the squamiferum. Um, not as fuzzy as like a squamiquol or a serpens, but still has enough fuzz to kind of like satisfy that, you know, that itch if you really like the fuzzy petioles. But um, I don't know, I don't know what it is about this plant that doesn't make me love it the way I thought I would love it. I think it looked really good in the packaging because like the leaves were super, super big and mature. They were really dark and they were wet. They were wet, okay? And it made it look really just delicious. But 
I'm just being fully honest with you here. I'm probably gonna give this plant another few months or maybe until the end of summer, just to see how, how much it transforms and how much it matures. But this one is sort of on the forefront of my mind in terms of plants that I could potentially sell because I don't love it. And what I have been trying to teach myself is to only keep plants that I love and I feel like I preach that to you guys all the time and so I just have to be a man of my word but we're not quite there yet not quite but those are just my feelings don't sit up for this one I know I know it looks very very exciting and probably one of the nicest plants you've ever seen before this is my philodendron Esmeralda dense narrow. Hopefully you've caught on to the sarcasm because this plant freaking hates me. It hates me so much. And I've heard <laughs> I've heard horror stories about the Esmeralda dense narrow, okay? And I thought maybe maybe this plant will make an exception for me. Like I thought I was like special or something. Nope. Nope. Hates me. Hates me so much. This this leaf never fully unfurled, doesn't want to push out any roots from this massively long stem, doesn't even really want to give me any roots down here. Basically this plant is doing nothing. It's doing nothing. And I love it. I love not this specific plant, but I love the Esmeralda and Snarrow. It's kind of like the hetero and the patriciae smushed together. And it's always really the plants that you love so much that don't really love you back. So this is definitely um, one of those cases. Some of you might remember this. Nobody laugh, nobody laugh. Okay, she needs a little help. These petioles are longer than, longer than long, okay? And it doesn't wanna stand on its own. So um, anyway, this is the Esmeralda Dense Aff, I think. And it just like, I don't know, this one, <laughs> this one is kind of like, threw me for a loop. When I first got it, all of the leaves were very like narrow, long, and dark. And then as soon as I brought it home, it started pushing out these like really buff looking macho leaves. And I was like, oh, I wasn't expecting that, but you know, I still like it very much. But the petals, even given like really, really bright light, because I did have this in my tent at one point, the, the petals are like a mile long. Like, what am I supposed to do with this? So without this little string contraption, this leaf would be down here. Imagine like five of those leaves on it. So after I repotted it, I had them all strung up. They were all being held up like a little puppet. And I just, I tried to shove it in here, it didn't fit. So I just chopped off a bunch of leaves. So now we have two leaves and it's much less stressful, much less stressful way less stressful and that's where we are right now so this new leaf is much smaller and it's kind of weird to say but i was kind of relieved to see a smaller leaf <laughs> the leaves are kind of stressing me out a bit i think that we are in desperate need of space in philodendron land so for this to not size up any larger than this was kind of a treat for me but um still a fun plant way easier than the Esmeralda Dense Narrow, that's for sure. It took a while to root though. After I, um, I didn't import it, but it was an import. I picked it up at the uh, Tropicals Plants pop-up at North Shore Tropicals, and that thing did not want to root for me at all. Um, but the second that I inoculated it with TPS Billion, it just freaking took off. So uh, that's my only tip, inoculate your, inoculate your plants. You guys are no stranger to this plant. Um, I just repotted it in a repot and chat video. Um, it's actually been pretty okay. I'm not seeing any new roots yet, but it is very, very new. It's a super, super new um, transplant. But yeah, no yellowing leaves, so I'm happy to report she doesn't seem to be stressed out about the repot. But shortly after the repot, this new leaf started started pushing out. And this thing is getting humongous. Humongo. It's kind of hard to see against this backdrop. You can kind of see like how big these leaves are. And 
It's so majestic. This is a plant that no matter how big it gets, I am never gonna allow it to stress me out because this is my number one guy. If I can only, I say this all the time, but if I can only pick one plant to keep in my collection, it's gonna be the tortum. I don't care. I would get rid of every single plant in this house if I could just keep this tortum. She's living in no drainage. She's living in a, 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 a soil and tree fern fiber on a moss and tree fern fiber pole. This is kind of like my new go-to now in terms of the pole substrate. I feel like the moss, the chopped up moss, that's very important, the chopped up moss makes a huge difference with these poles, especially the ones that have larger holes. It kind of keeps things in and makes it a little bit more tidy and it really, really holds in that moisture a lot more than the tree fern fiber. Yeah, this guy is barely living in there. Um, I don't know, I don't know what the plan is. I really don't. I don't know what the plan is once it grows out of that exo, um, but I surely will figure it out because like I said, number one guy. If you're new here, something that I've been saying all the time is that if I can influence you to do anything, it's get a plant cart, a plant rolling cart, which I will show you at the end, and get a tortum. Second to last plant in that XO is my Florida Beauty. When's the last time I even showed you guys this plant? I don't remember, but um, she kind of went through it last year because I put her through it. Um, I wanted to propagate this plant to give to my mom. It was one of her wish list plants. So I chopped it, it rotted, roots rotted, stem rotted, had to chop it back, lost a bunch of leaves down at the bottom. After two, no, after one unsuccessful repot, the second time was um, definitely more successful and it's taken really well to party pond and it's in a very, very perlite heavy party pond as you can see because of it rotting before. But if you wanna know, if you must know what happened to this leaf, well, I sat on it. So I was cleaning out my EXO. I put this down on a stool, put it down, got a text message or something happened. I got distracted. I sat down on my chair here. This leaf was sitting on the chair and it was just fresh. It was so fresh still, it was so soft, so delicate. And yeah, it just ripped right off and it actually stuck to my butt. So that was really, really um, unfortunate because it would have been such a pretty leaf. Like, it's definitely gaining some size now. Not as big as Alice is, but according to my calculations with how much larger this um, calico is getting, I feel like we are slowly but surely getting there. Now I can see some of these roots are wanting to attach to this pole, but I think it needs a little help. So before I forget, I'm just gonna grab a Velcro tie really quick. Sometimes they just need a little help, you know? They can't always do it on their own, but not, not bad for being in an open greenhouse. This plant does push out a frick ton, frick ton of extra floral nectaries. Anytime I go to like take photos of this plant or do any kind of maintenance, my hands are just so sticky. This is the Florida Beauty. It's honestly given me such incredible variegation. There really hasn't been any leaf that has kind of given me a scare of like, oh, maybe the variegation won't continue. Maybe this one, but I've never, I mean, I've doubted it maybe like once, but it's just kind of proven to me time after time that it just has great genetics and um, whatever I've been doing in terms of care, it seems to enjoy it. And unlike Alice, who um, has recently discovered that she does not like the Florida Beauty when it's large, she likes it when it's medium size, I am quite the opposite. I thought that her largest leaves were like the most beautiful things I have set my eyes on. And so now I have goals to get mine that big. And I'm getting closer, we're getting closer, but not quite there yet. Last plant in that XO and I'm actually glad I got it out of there because I don't remember the last time I soaked this thing. Oh my gosh, she is dry. So many new roots are coming out. Anyway, um, so this is my Brassavola, cucul cu Brassavola cuculata. Cu 
Kulata, I don't know if I'm saying that right. I acquired this orchid in 2021, I think. My friend from Ontario sent it to me. I wanted it so bad and I posted on my story asking if somebody in Ontario could ship it to me and um, I got roasted. I did. They were like, why do you want that? Why don't you just go buy chives from the grocery store? <laughs> you guys aren't wrong, okay? But they're not chives, they're not edible, and they're really, really cute and I love them. So I've tried to be really good about soaking this thing. It dries out so effing fast. So now I've resorted to just kind of like spraying it every time I see it, but clearly it's still not happy. I could probably shove this inside of a closed EXO and I probably should and I probably will. But um, yeah, I'm glad I got this down because I'm, sh I'm gonna show you guys what I've been soaking this thing in for about a month now. And ever since I started doing that, it's starting to push out like so many more growth points as well as new roots finally. I didn't have new roots for a really long time and I was kind of getting worried, but yeah. She has definitely come alive, but let me show you quickly the uh, orchid fertilizer I'm using. Full disclosure, um, this was sent to me by TPS, but I'm not an affiliate. I don't get paid if you buy it or whatever, um, but this is what I have been giving that orchid. I basically just take a little, what are those called? Those squeezy things. I'm gonna say that I use about like, three to four milliliters in water and I just soak it. I soak it anywhere from like 30 minutes to sometimes overnight, just depending if it's been a while since I've soaked it. And yeah, she honestly is looking better than ever. Um, there was a point in time where I thought that it was gonna die and I had to chop a lot of the little chive things off because it had just completely dry dried out. Um, so yeah, she's looking a lot fuller now, a lot more lush. But again, I've only been using this for a month. The only thing I can say for sure that I've seen is more growth has been pushing out of it and roots. So that's good. But yeah, that is it for all of the plants in this EXO. I'm gonna pop everything back in and then we're gonna jump straight into here. This last EXO is pretty much all Ethereum. I'm not gonna lie, I, there's probably like four of them that I have no clue <laughs> what the IDs are. But we're gonna go through them. So um, the first one is this variegated Magnificum that I acquired as a rehab from Lauren. It's not going great. I'm not gonna lie, it's not going great. It was struggling with her and it is definitely still struggling with me. I am just hoping to get some roots on it. It's in literally, it has the world's smallest stem so i'm not working with much here but i have faith so here's what it looks like now hopefully it's still alive the next time i do an update so uh the next one this is one of my seedlings for my seedling batch i crossed a crystal mag with a dark forgetty eye this is one of them um you would have seen this one repotted recently in a repot and chat uh doing fine doesn't seem to mind being in larger pants but yeah, I feel like this one has more traits from the the Forgetti Eye rather than the Crystal Mag. I mean, obviously this is not like, you wouldn't look at this and be like, oh yeah, that's Forgetti Eye. But in comparison to my other seedlings that came out from that batch, you can definitely see the Forgetti Eye more in this one than any of the other ones that came out of it. Next one is this Anthurium Queen of Hearts, which still has no roots. I don't even know how it's still alive, but um, this is a bunny plant. I got this one from Amanda in our last shipment. And it did have a nice big leaf that, not, I wouldn't say big, it had a leaf that came out of it shortly after I received it, but it didn't, it never fully unfurled, only one half of it unfurled, and then the rest died off. So it was just half a leaf. I just chopped the whole thing off, and um, another leaf came out of it. So. That's good, at least it's alive. It looks nothing like a queen of hearts right now, but hopefully um, in the next few leaves she starts showing more of her beautiful traits because right now it just looks a little bit, looks a little unsuspecting. But uh, yeah, she is very special and now my husband's home. What is this? Hello? 
I'm not gonna lie, these, these next three in Ethereum, I have no clue who they are. I think one of these is my Ace of Spades. Um, my Ace had half a stem left going vertically. Um, so it had like a really, really narrow stem because it had rotted. But I'm not seeing, I tried to dig these up a bit to try and find it. But all of these look like it has a normal stem. So now I'm like, are any of you my ace? And if you're not, where did my ace go? <laughs> so I don't know who these are, but obviously they are some kind of dark leaf anthurium, which I most likely got from Amanda. We're just going to have to wait till they get larger to see who they are. But these are them. <laughs> This next, this next one is obviously a Lux hybrid. I think, I think it's my Crystal Lux. What is it? A Mag Lux? Maybe a Mag Lux. I can't remember. My my guess is Mag Lux. Um, it died back down to a stump and regrew, and I lost the tag. So yeah, I am obviously happy that it came back. It was kind of unexpected. I kind of forgot about it. I chopped it and I just threw it in a prop bin in my tent. And then it was like growing up against the lid that I had it, like I had it in a dome and it was really like low. And so both of these leaves had like grown into the lid, which is why they look really warped. But safe to say I was like, surprisingly happy when I saw it. I'm like, whoa, what are you and what are you doing in my tent? Because I totally forgot about it, but she's alive, whoever she is. I'm sure after Amanda watches this, she's gonna be like, you dum-dum, and tell me who it is. Sorry, Amanda, I lost your beautiful little tag. I'm just kind of plowing through these little anthurium here, but um, this one is a crystal mag crossed with a forgetty eye Lux. This one is one of Lauren's homegrown hybrids. I'm so happy to have so many Lux hybrids in my collection. I actually don't own a Lux. I want to own a Lux, but I kind of want to grow one from a small plant that's already been acclimatized because I killed the the only Lux that I had in my collection and it was a very, very swift death. So I think if I have a smaller plant, one that's not so mature and that's been acclimatized already, I'll have better luck. But these Lux hybrids are just so... They're so resilient. They're way easier, I think, than their parent plants, and I'm just really happy to have them. Um, so yeah, th that's another Lux hybrid. This one is another one of my seedlings from that batch, so Crystal Mag Forgetti Eye, and you can kind of see just like how different it is. Like, where's my other guy? Don't you guys think these look different? I feel like they don't look like the same plant. Like, this one has. This one looks way more Mag. I would say, and then this one is more forgetty eye. But I do have, um, I only kept three seedlings out of that batch that I can remember, maybe four, but I think it's three, I think three. But yeah, this one is another really cute one. I just wanted to keep this one because it looked so much like a mag, and I kind of wanted to keep three seedlings that looked completely different. Nobody freak out, okay. This is my, my queen, she's not looking very queen-like, but her little growth point here is getting bigger every day, which is such a little treat. And I think something's gonna bust out of here soon. So this is my queen from Amanda. She, she has too much faith in me, you guys. I posted a video about how I'm just so bad with queens and then she sent me one and I was like, here. <laughs> That's how it's going. So uh, yeah, this is another Amanda plant. This is a, I'm not gonna look at the tag. I wanna know what it is. Anthurium subsignatum papillolaminum. I do have a larger one, which you will see in part three of this video, but this is the baby one. She sent us larger ones as backups because we were having a ridiculously hard time rooting these. Um, she's rooted now, but I mean, I did manage to root it before and then it rotted. But yeah, she's she's still a little a little teeny tiny thing, but it's nice that I know what it's gonna look like now as a, a larger a larger plant. Okay, I don't know if I'm remembering this incorrectly, but I think this is an Ethereum obtusum. 
This was grown from a seed um, from Amanda and it just looks like looks like a little tiny weed that grows from your concrete right now but i'm excited to see what it turns into and then this one is a very exciting one um and i can see it pushing out a new leaf this is a luxurians cross with a ralph Lynham fort sherman and the rlfs is one of my number one top anthuriums on my wish list right now so I am just like freaking stoked to have one crossed with the Lux. I didn't even know I was getting this one, honestly. This one was also another surprise from my dearest Amanda. So this is my Anthurium Willingeri from Amanda. Nope, nope, nope. This is my Anthurium Willingeri from Alice. Um, she cut me a piece of hers because we believe that we have two different sort of like forms of when linger I, so I'm hoping some time down the line mine gets large enough that I can chop mine for her. But yeah, it doesn't really look like much right now. It's very, very juvenile, but I am excited to watch this one grow. This one's like so nice. Like the leaves are so rigid and stiff, even as like a young plant. So different than like a vitarifolium would be at this size or like maturity level. It's just, oh man, it's so nice. Oh gosh, why did I do? Look at my hand. <laughs> okay, dokie. Um, this next one, this next one is a hybrid that we don't know what the exact parentage is of it because of one of the. I think it was the mom. So this was a cross that uh, Alice and Jing collaborated on with together. Um, we call one of the plants her tofu anthurium because it looks. Not, it doesn't look like tofu, but it grew in a tofu container. Anyway, the mother plant looks like this. I'll just throw it up on the screen. It kind of looks like it would be almost, it to me, it sort of reminds me of a king of spades, almost with like a more narrow leaf and more like elongated lobes. Um, but it also kind of looks like it could have, I don't know, like mag or something like I don't know. I don't know. But it's a really, really cool hybrid. It has really like a pink sinus and like really like striking venation. So it's a super cool plant. Um, she hybridized that with, she hybridized it with Alice's Forgetti Eye. So I feel like it's really starting to um, take form now and show me what it can look like as a more mature plant because for a long time I really like, I didn't know what we were working with here looked very just like any other you know seedling would but i think that mine is growing a little bit faster than the ones that um maybe alice and jing have i don't know if they have the runs but she seemed to have given me like a really strong seedling and it's looking so cute so i'm i'm actually very invested to see what that one looks like because i love both parents very much and yeah, that's gonna be a really, really sickening hybrid. The last two Amanda plants in that EXO, you might be thinking that this is a red crystal. It is not. I think, I think, and of course I'll throw the real ID on the screen. I think this is an Ethereum crystal mag. And the reason that she gave, um, she gave us an offset of this plant is because her mother plant looks so looks so different. It doesn't look like a typical crystal mag. It very much looks like it has like some red crystal in it. It's a beautiful, beautiful plant. And um, yeah, I'm really happy to have um, a cutting from it because like, look at it. It looks super red crystalline to me. Crystalline to me. And even the abaxials remind me of a red crystal. Rest in peace, my red crystal that I got from Amanda, which was like ugh, my number one plant. I was so freaking happy to have it, and it was the first one that died on me, so that's just wonderful. Uh, and then another plant from Amanda. This is my Anthurium nigrolaminum GG. Uh, this is the most luck I've had with a GG historically. I've killed many of them. So we are keeping fingers, toes, and eyes crossed for this one. Um, so far, so good. Nothing suspicious or spooky so far. Uh, this leaf I grew in my care. Um, she, I think she sent me this leaf. I think it came with this leaf and then I grew this one. So 
yeah, she's doing okay. She's in no drainage in tree fern fiber and pond. And I hope I didn't just jinx myself. Okay, the last few, I've got two politiforms here. I'm just going to show them to you guys at once, side by side. So this is my original politiflorum, um, and this is the newest one that I acquired from the recent Tropicals Plants pop-up. Um, the reason I have two is because I love politiflorums, and also this one is way more narrow than this guy here. Oh, he has, she has a new leaf coming, and she needs help. Look at how narrow these leaves are. They're definitely more narrow than like any politiflorum I've seen other than the ones that were at that show. Like they're pretty much the same size in terms of maturity level, but these leaves are like slightly more narrow than these ones. And even like the emergent leaves on them, they're so sharp and skinny, whereas these ones are a little bit, they're a little bit thicker. Um, but they're both growing in no drainage, uh, both in soil, a soil tree fern fiber mix. The only difference is, is that this one has Lucka down at the bottom just so I can keep a reserve. But yeah, this is, uh, I got this like a month ago now, maybe more. And she's, yeah, she's growing like a dream. This is going to be the second leaf in my care. I grew, which one did I grow? This one? It's not bigger than the last leaf that came on it, but not bad for being a new import. And then the last one in that EXO is of course my Anthurium Vichii Super Narrow. This is a plant that I have been very excited for lately. Um, it came with these two leaves at the show and then I grew this one. Um, this one is also in a soil tree fern fiber mix. I can see it's, it's rooting very, very slowly. There are new roots, but it's super, super slow. Um, but so far, it's doing okay. Um, and I just like love this freaking super, super tight ribbing and how it goes all the way to the edge of the leaf margin. It's just so delicious. I, I just find it to be way more pleasing to the eye than the regular VGI that have like um, more space between the ribs. Whereas this one is like packed so, so closely like an alien. So yeah, that is all of the Ethereum in that EXO. Eventually, all of these Ethereums are going to have to move out to my living room shelf where I have all of my Ethereum. Again, the only reason that I have it in this EXO is because they are rehabbing or they're seedlings or they're brand new. I'm not going to grow a seedling out on the shelf. I am not that adventurous or brave. Um, but once they start gaining more size, more strength, then I will slowly acclimatize them out. All right, guys, so we are here in my tent. Um, I'm not going to be doing a super... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I installed or I built a media cabinet like a couple weeks ago, and I got a really bad blister. And now it's peeling, perfect. Okay, so anyway, we're here in my tent. I'm not gonna like pull everything out because everything looks super sad, but I'm just gonna kind of show you what we have going on here. So this is the bottom cutting of my philodendron Colelia round that I'm currently notching as an experiment. We don't know who she is and we'll never know, probably. This is that really sad <laughs> philodendron tenue I told you guys about. No matter what I do, she hates me and um, I think that's gonna be our relationship until the end of time. This is a philodendron linamii that was attacked by spider mites and you can see she's still doing very, very sad. Um, I have my uh, philodendron rubro juvenile whatever El Choco red in here because this one recently got spider mites. You can see all of that damage on this leaf. This is a, <sighs> okay. Okay, where's my phone? Oh, where are you? Okay. This is a, I think a 69686 hybrid from Amanda. Still not quite sure what the leaves are gonna look like in full maturity, but um, it's gaining size. It's just, again, another plant with spider mites. 
I recently picked this one up from Lauren and it came out of a prop box and was out of a prop box for a few hours and it literally just turned to spinach after. So I have it in here mostly because it's the warmest area and I know I should probably not put it near plants that have spider mites, but um, that's where she is. Um, this is that philodendron, frick, philodendron by color mini purple that I imported. This one completely ran out of water and I didn't know and it just, it looked like it died completely, but it looks like it's alive again, which is good, I guess. This is my Rehab Sherberichii Equigenera. I have this um, Monstera, which might be a different form of Monstera. I just don't know for sure yet, so I'm holding on to it. I've got all my Rehab, oh. I've got all my Rehab Gloriouses in here. This was the bottom cutting, this was the top cutting, and it just looks awful. But I think the next leaf should be a lot nicer than this, hopefully. This used to be my Philodendron, Rosio Catafillum. Um, spider mites as well. Chopped off all the leaves. Couldn't be bothered. This is a prop of this um, Polyneura broget. Um, I saw a mealy bug on it, which is why I isolated it into here. Um, I have my really sad. Come on. Holtonianum back there. And then up here, I have what could be another form of Monstera, still not 100% sure. I have my Postazanum, that is my spider mite magnet up there, and then this orchid that looks very, 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 very sad. Sorry, I didn't want to spend too much time on um, my rehab tent because they're just rehabs. And it's not something that I'm really wanting to show off too much, if you know what I mean. All right guys, the last thing, very last thing we're gonna go through. So those were all the plants in the plant room minus the ones that I didn't show you, which you've seen in so many other videos, um, all of the ones that I need to repot soon. But we're just gonna quickly, very, very quickly look at my um, plant cart again. I feel like I will take any opportunity to show this baby off. And I'm so happy that since my <laughs> spring cleaning slash plant cart video went up a good amount of you went out and got one and i hope that it's been worth it and i hope i did not disappoint you because this thing has been oh my gosh this thing cured my depression this is the um oh gosh i don't know what the name is specifically but it's the cart from ikea and you will see that i have here on the top let's bring you closer um, I have a box here that kind of rotates different things, but right now it's housing my um, labeler, my embosser, my LTH meter from Houseplant Journal, this thing that I use to clean up soil when I'm repotting, my stickers that I stick on pots when I'm giving plants away and stuff, and then my Mossify Mister, which I actually really, really love. Um, and I've maybe charged that thing like twice since I've had it and I've had it for years. Well, not years. I think I got it early last year. So that's what's in this little box. Um, and very recently, oh, look at you. Let's clean you up. I just used it. Might as well show you. In here, I have some isopropyl alcohol that I've put in this amber bottle. If you guys watch my vlog channel, you'll see the store that I got all of these bottles from. Sometimes it's like miner it mineralizes on the, the nozzle. So anywho, um, back here I have things like my scissors, spoons for repotting, these little things for fertilizers, um, peppermint oil, my shears, I've got these for trimming my aquarium. And then in this little container, I keep my rocks that I use to stabilize plants, I use to stabilize moss poles. This little thing houses all of my plant tags, Sharpie pens, um, rooting hormone, kiki paste, uh, Q-tips, and 
cotton rounds when I'm um, sterilizing my stuff. Um, this is the cup that I use to water plants. This is Great White, my Grisel inoculant, and my Callusing Hormone, which is not screwed on correctly. Um, and then like I showed you, alcohol in here. This is TPS1, and wow, I need to clean that one. But um, yeah, TPS1 in there, CalMag in here. Getting my um, fertilizers in these pump bottles has been absolutely life-changing. So if you have not already done that, please do it. And then in here is my TPS liquid soil. And then I have spinosad and, oh, I showed you that already, my callusing hormone. So that's the top shelf. Also, I've got this little magnet here. Let me move you down. I've got this little magnet here where I hold my trusty little scraper. And I have a tiny little disco ball here for um, depression reasons. I've got some of my clips that I use for my trellises on here and I'm actually thinking about clipping more of them here or here so that I can free up some space in my bin that I keep them in. On this side, I have a hanging basket that I used to use in my cabinets which I now use for my towels that I use in here. And then I also, on the side, hang my dustpan and my other little thing that I use to sweep my tables when I'm done repotting. On this lower shelf, I have all of my like um, zip ties and regular ties and hooks and all those things that I use for my exos and my greenhouses. This is all of my fertilizers. I've got my squeeze bottles. I have this bottle back here that I use for watering, my cinnamon. And then at the very bottom are sort of excess things. So like my big TPS1 bottle, but you saw that I put it in a pump bottle. So I just refill it with this. Extra CalMag, some of my extra um, fertilizers. I'm trying to get through the rest of this liquid gold leaf, but it smells so bad that I don't really reach for it anymore. Azimax, all of my pesticides pest sprays in here, alcohol, hydrogen peroxide. Um, in here are like my extra shears, more things that I use to clean chunks and stuff. Just like extra things that I do reach for sometimes, but not all the time. Magnifying glass, extra spoons, and then more pesticides and my, um, oh, you're over here, my cast aisle soap. So that is gonna wrap it up for part two of my plant tour. I hope that it wasn't boring. I don't know why I like, I'm thinking back over the last few hours and I'm like, I feel like that was really boring. Give this video a thumbs up if you thought it was boring. <laughs> um, the next part and the last part, I'm going to show you guys my living room plants slash plants that are scattered around this first floor and then also my bedroom plants. But uh, I hope that I answered all your questions in terms of plants that are growing in here, how I have things configured, how I have things set up, what's on my plant cart. If you have any questions about anything in the plant room, please feel free to leave it in a comment. I hope you guys enjoyed this plant tour. I know that it's very different than the way I did my first plant tour, but I felt like I don't know, I felt like this was more appropriate for plants in here and I'm gonna be doing the same thing for part three so that's gonna be another long video so buckle your seat belts. Um, but yeah, that's gonna wrap it up. Thank you again Factor for sponsoring today's video. Please don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it and I will see you in the next one.